welcome. I'm Pastor Laura Vio. I'm the minister here at Shalote Presbyterian Church. And we welcome those of you who are here and those who have joined us from their homes and other places. We are here today because Steve believed this. In life and in death, we belong to God. As children of God and followers of Jesus, we also belong to each other. So it is right in these moments when life intersects with death, when we feel most keenly the fragility of our own bodies, we gather, we gather. We come to remember that we are not alone in this world or in our grief. We come so that we might be nearer to God. And we come to remember our dear brother in Christ, who was also a devoted father, husband, grandfather, firefighter, marine, tenor, clerk of session, and so, so much more to so many people. Even as we remember who Steve was in this earthly realm, we rejoice in the reality of where he is now. And we come together with the help of technology so that we are not alone in this space, nor where we are virtually. We gather our hearts to support you, Beth, and the whole family, family by blood, family by choice. To love one another through these hardest days and to bear witness to the promise of the resurrection. We come this afternoon to worship the one to whom we belong in life and in death. For as many of you have been baptized in water, you have been baptized in Christ. You have been clothed, you have clothed yourself with Christ. In his baptism, Steve was clothed with Christ in the day of Christ's coming. He shall be clothed with glory. Let us pray. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, you formed us from the dust of the earth, and by your breath you gave us life. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, you tasted death for all humanity, and by rising from the grave, you opened the way to eternal life. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, you are the comforter of all who sorrow our sure confidence and everlasting hope. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee, all the follies of sin, I resign. My precious Redeemer, my Savior, Mom. 
My gracious Redeemer, my Savior art Thou. If ever I love Thee, my Jesus, tis now. My Jesus, tis Please join your hearts with mine in prayer. Eternal God, your love for us is everlasting. You alone can turn the shadow of death into the brightness of morning light. Help us to turn to you with believing hearts. In the stillness of this hour, speak to us of eternal things so that hearing the promises in scripture, we might have hope and be lifted above our distress into the peace of your presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I want to offer to you two readings from two prophets. The first, Zephaniah, is tucked back in with the minor prophets, which means that these beautiful words are easy to miss out on. Chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing on a day of festival. And then there's Isaiah, one of those major prophets, whose words we never overlook, and offers up these promises from God in chapter 41. What do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends, of the earth. He does not grow weary or faint. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and grow weary, and the young will fall exalted. But those who wait for the Lord will mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I suspect that Paul, the apostle, was drawing on the words of these and other prophets as much as his own faith when he wrote to the church in Rome with this exhortation wrapped in assurance. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, Who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not give us everything else? Who would bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. And who is to condemn? It is Christ who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God and indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Would hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. No. In all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced, Paul says, I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation 
nor anything else in all of creation would be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Those two are words for the people of God today. All right, so here's what I'd rather be doing today. I'd rather be sitting in the living room on Hardsmith Street, drinking a beer and chatting with Steve. I'd rather be watching those eyes sparkle with mischief or welling up with compassion. I'd rather be soaking up that spirit, that, that beautiful presence of his that was so alive with energy, even within the stillness of his body in these last months. You all have decades of rather bees to pull from in your memories, and decades of should bees that won't be. I suspect that's part of what kept Steve here for the bonus time that you all had beyond what the doctors anticipated, soaking up as much love and laughter as he could and giving away as much love and compassion as he could for as long as his body would let him. Not because he feared where he was headed, but because he loved where he was. Steve was a good Marine and a good Presbyterian because I saw in him a glorious mix of Semper Fi and Semper Reformanda. Always faithful and always being reformed. Steadfast in his love for family and love for God, even as his way of being in the world had to shift that improvise and adapt and overcome spirit comes in handy throughout your life, whether you're talking about a growing family or becoming empty nesters, moving to new places, or figuring out how to get to the tenor section in your chair 
instead of by foot. Of course, it's hard to know sometimes where steadfast faith ends and stiff-necked stubbornness kicks in. Here's what I know. As fear crept in because his hands were growing weak, Steve sang on, trusting in the God who is mighty to save, who rejoices over us in gladness, believing that God was singing to, singing over him and his family like a father or grandfather, cradling a newborn in need of a reminder of just how cherished they are. And on those recovery days, the exhausted, quiet days after gloriously noisy family visits, Steve sang on, at the very least in his dreams trusting in an everlasting God who never faints or grows weary, waiting for the Lord to renew his strength. And after a few especially weary days last week, and more than a few tearful goodbyes, I can imagine his tenor voice singing on, There's a verse that wasn't included in that arrangement of my Jesus, I love thee. And we were singing that even as the family was gathered at Steve's bedside. And I want to share these words with you because I I think they ring very true for him. I love thee in life. I will love thee in death and praise thee as long as thou lendest me breath. And say, when the death dew lies cold on my brow, if ever I love thee, Lord Jesus, tis now. Trusting the truth that nothing Nothing in this world, nor in the world to come, would or could separate him or his family or his friends or his beloved church or those circles of people who love him still. Nothing, not even death, can separate any of us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. It might be a little harder for us to manage today because this world is not yet as it will be. And because we continue to wait for the final end of death, we find ourselves physically separated from those we love when the end of this life comes. And in this weird COVID time, we find ourselves separated from the ones that we long to gather with as we say goodbye to a man that we love. And yet, even in the midst of all that, we can give thanks today, even as we would much rather be basking in his smile, because we know that Steve has run the race and is now among that great cloud of witnesses who is cheering us on so that we might run and not grow weary, so that we might walk and not faint and carry on offering as much love and compassion for as long as we can as we live in this world. We can trust in death that the promises of baptism were made complete and that Steve has been claimed once more by the God who loved him first and loves him still because that is the amazing love the amazing grace that God extended to Steve and extends to you and to me and to all of us. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh God, before whom generations rise and pass away, 
We praise you for all your servants who, having li lived this life in faith, now live eternally with you. Especially we thank you for your servant Steve, whose baptism is indeed now complete in death. We praise you for the gift of his life, for all in him that was good and kind and faithful. For all in him that was slightly annoying. For all the grace that you gave him and that it kindled in him the love of your dear name, enabling him to serve you faithfully. We give thanks for the many ways that he offered that same grace and love to all who came to know him. We give thanks for his generous heart, his great love for music, and the way your love flowed through Steve in his care for his beautiful bride, Beth, for his children and all their children, and all of those whom he claimed as his great big family. We give thanks that his capacity for love went well beyond his household, enabling him to offer care and compassion to friends he'd known forever, and those of us who only had months to get to know him. While it would have been wonderful to share just one more day, one more conversation, another noisy holiday, another adventure, making new memories, another beer in that living room, we give thanks that for Steve, death is past and pain is ended, and that he has now entered the joy you have prepared through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. hard thing, a hard thing about death and funerals and committals is that it feels like it is one goodbye after another, that they just keep coming. But the beautiful thing is, with each of those goodbyes, at the bedside, here inside, at the columbarium, a little bit more of our hearts are learning how to love Steve now that he's not here in person. And so we say one of those goodbyes now as we commend Steve to God. Lord, you are immortal. In fact, you alone are immortal as the creator and maker of all. And we, we are mortal formed of the earth and to earth we shall return. You ordained this when you created us, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, and yet, even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant Steve with all your saints, where there is neither pain nor sorrow nor sighing, but life everlasting. Amen. I can think of no better blessing to offer before we go outside than this plea in music to make us more holy and loving and patient and faithful.
invite you to make your way to the columbarium through these doors, just kind of being mindful of keeping yourself spaced out as you go. And we'll sing you out and join you in a moment. Lord, make us more patient. Lord, make us more patient. Lord, make us more patient until we meet again. Patient, patient, patient until we meet again. Faithful, faithful, faithful until 